Hey guys, what's going on? It's Ordinary here. This is episode 36 as the GM of the Phoenix Coyotes. And last episode, we got up to the All-Star game. Um, we found a, an easy little way to get some good players on our team. The old uh, 26 years old uh, little glitch there. So we took advantage of that because I was a little steamed that I lost my goalie in free agency because I wasn't paying attention. And uh, yeah, so that's that's uh, that's where we are now. We are in year seven. Uh, just got into the actual new year, so 2021. This episode, we got to get through the trade deadline, probably finish up the simulation of the season, and uh, see where we're at for playoffs next time. So, without further ado, let's get this ball rolling here. Uh, gonna see when we can finally use some of these off-season signings, or not even off-season signings, but just the players that we traded for, uh, the 26-year-old, see when their trade value finally does get that jump. Um, I was expecting it to maybe be right before the trade deadline, because that's where it was um, last season with our, with our goalie that we signed in free agency, and then he got a jump, but he wasn't worth anything. Um, but since then, I have been playing some of my personal GMs, and it wasn't until the draft. So it's obviously not the same every time because that guy did get a jump by last trade deadline. So we'll see what happens with that. It uh, looks like we're rolling through here. Loss and a win. I didn't see where we were before. Dauphin already got a 30-goal season. That's a big win, 8-2. Jesus, that's a lot of goals. Dauphin hasn't scored in three games. Um, what's happened in real life since uh, since I did my last one? Kings won the cup. Yep. Uh, spoiler alert: my the video I released on uh, on Monday there was already pre-recorded, so didn't talk about the Kings at all there. Um, that's too bad. Didn't want them to win. Not gonna lie. But uh, you know, congratulations, I guess. How many? I thought I was simply like two weeks. Jesus Christ. Oh, there I am. In between Dallas. That's where I ended. I remember now. Uh, Dauphin wanting to score any goals, perhaps? One goal would be cool. One goal. He's going to score this game. No. So Dauphin, 100-game uh, scoreless streak here, it looks like. McKinley leading the league in points, though. What a beaut. Uh, Sagan down there. Uh, Phoenix, we got Dauphin there in eighth. He's only if he would score, he'd be uh, at least fourth, because he hasn't got any goals in forever. He's not on the assists at all. Toscala, that power forward is down there, with thirty-seven. Uh, somehow Dauphin still leading the league in goals, uh, without scoring in the previous five. Six, at least seven. I think it's been at least eight. So scoreless and eight, yet still uh, holding on to that rocket with Shard. Let's get uh, let's get up right before this trade deadline here. All right, Dolphin, big goal here, buddy. Big goal. Nope. A couple of two, three losses. One minor win against the big bad Bruins. Uh, yeah, there it is. Five goals. None of them scored by Dauphin, so brings it to at least ten. There it is. Two-goal game to end the ten-goal scoreless streak. McKinley up to 52 assists already, which is unbelievable. Another goal by Dauphin. So it looks like our top two players there may be getting back into form a little bit. I guess McKinley never fell out, but Dauphin, no, no goal there. But three goals in his last three games, so that's good. If he can keep that up. It would be cool to see him at 40, uh, 40 points there by the trade deadline, or 40 goals. Would have been cool, sorry. He's not going to do it now, but. Hit up the scouting right before the trade deadline. Um, I don't remember what we were scouting. But you know what? I've decided that we need goaltending. Our defenseman, Jesus Christ, I can't even speak. 
there's no defenseman in this year's draft, apparently. Uh, I see two Russians. Oh, there we go. WHL. Should have known to go to the WHL. Classic me. Uh, okay. Let's get right up here. See if we can beat Boston. They're done with the 2-5 win. Dolphin nothing, eh? Jesus, buddy. Get this little pop-up. Yeah, yeah, I know. I'm not dumb. All right. McDavid has a lot of points there in Buffalo. Is he past McKinley? No. Eight. So McKinley's already 83 points. So he's more than a point per game if he doesn't get any points for the rest of the season. Um, Dauphin, um, even though he did shitty there, he's still over a point per game. Is What's his dick still on assists? Toscola? Yeah. He's uh, fourth in the league in assists. So I imagine... What does he need for goals to be point per game? 6, 20. He just needs 20 goals and he'll be point per game. So that's possible. It's definitely possible. Let's take a look at uh, at everyone at this point in the season and then we will be able to tell uh, if someone needs to go, if we need to trade someone here before the trade deadline. Dauphin. Alright, McKinley. 83 points. Toscala, yeah, he has 21 goals, so he's a point per game. So these are our three point per game players. Uh, just happens to be our first line. Grant Morris down there on the second line. Uh, killing it for a two way forward. 56 points is nothing to uh, shake a stick at. Morgan Riley finally showing up for us. Um, ended up with only 48 points last year and 47 the year before, so uh, definitely his best season. Hopefully he can translate that into some playoff stats because, as we see here, that has uh, not been his forte. Galchenyuk, uh, slowing down a little bit, it looks like. Um, he'll probably, yeah, he'll still reach his uh, general mid to high 50s uh, point production there. Skinner, definitely not having the year he had last year, but uh, that's... Did we have Toskala last year on the first line, or did we... He was cycling between second and first, I think, last time. So now that Skinner's um, Pierce second line, I think. Is he? Or maybe he's on first line now. But uh, whatever the case, definitely not having um, a 78-point season this year. Could get to uh, somewhere between these two, probably. He's going to get more than 53, or at least he better. Mm, probably won't get to 66. Probably um, mid to low 60s there for him. Gormley, uh, second defenseman on the list. 31 points, so yeah, he should... Uh, tie his uh, career best which he got last year which is 42 points Murphy not doing bad at all uh, considering this is I guess just his real uh, his first real full season although I'm sure the team that we pulled him from was playing him but we haven't played him for at least three years uh, he got a little bit of time for us last year when we made a trade and we had to pull someone up so he had only uh, from the trade deadline out, and he only had four points. But this year he has 29, so that's good. Faxa, one of the players we picked up that was 26 years old. Uh, he has 21 points, 52, or yeah, 21 points. Um, this is his first season in the big leagues, it looks like. Uh, and he's not doing too poorly there. Definitely, especially as a third line center. Reinhardt, another one of those players we picked up that was 26. Um, looks like they gave him a season in the Chell and then brought him down for two more. Uh, don't know why they would have done that, but he only had four points in his last full season. Uh, already up to 19. His best season was 20 points in the minors, so looks like he'll do better than that this year. Ekman Larson. He has 17 points in 63 games. That's not very good. He's uh, looking at a career worst here. Ooh, Ekman Larson could be a trading chip now with a performance like that. Sissons was 26. We picked him up doing that 26-year-old uh, garbage. Uh, looking for his best season here as well. If he can get three points, which he uh, should be able to. Hornquist, how's he doing? 16 points. Um, he was definitely uh, on better lines before so we have him on the fourth line I think even so I'm not too worried about his performance 34 year old um, or do we have him on the third line I think he's on the third line uh, Hanowski I think we had to move him down to the fourth line 
He's uh, 12 points, not doing so well. Boone Jenner, uh, similar story. Yep, not doing so hot. Summers as a defensive defenseman, 9 points. That's not so bad. Uh, Samuelson centering that fourth line. This is his uh, first real season. He's got eight points, so kind of a bust there. And Tim Wheeler. Um, how is he doing? I was going to say we draft him, but I know we didn't. Uh, two points in six games this year. So I guess why is he? In, oh, he's a uh, he's a uh, not sent down. That's what it is. I gotta send him down. So we'll do edit lines. Now I can see, uh, yeah, see Skinner is on the second line. Hornquist is third. Fax is third. Sissons is third. Samuelson wasn't centering. Jenner was. And then Hanowski. Roster moves. Let's send down our little buddy. Where is he? He's 78 overall, wasn't he? Oh, he has. Oh, he is down now, but he had played in the NHL when we got the trade for him. Okay. Making sense now. And then uh, I'll just check the goalies from here because I forgot to do it over there. Uh, Vizantine, 85 overall. 33 wins, 14 losses. 2.28, uh, which isn't the greatest, not so bad. 9.23, which is respectable enough for me. And then back up is Whitney. 8, 2, and 0. Oh, hasn't got many starts at all. 2.29, so it's about the same. 9, 2, 0, oh, so it's about the same. So he's doing good when he needs to uh, get called on there. So, if anyone is to get traded, I think it is. Let's see if any of these players got their uh, Reinhardt. Yeah, he got his jump, right? He was not worth that much at all. So now, uh, looks like some of these... Maybe it's when they get from 26 to 27. That could be the uh, the metric that it uses to uh, mark their trade value. Because if they're still 26, no, I don't. No, I have no idea. Uh, this was our draft pick, Tobias King, German Chara. He is where's his six nine two thirty four. We took him third overall. So. Back to what I was saying, if we were going to trade anyone away, I w would not be opposed to trading away Ekman Larson, who has not been performing very well for us at all. Um, I guess maybe it's because he's uh, top four now and he's used to having more time, but he's got some trade value to him and he hasn't done anything for us. So Let's take a look at his stats one more time. Uh, we're used to seeing around 30 points a season from him, uh, which he could still reach. But coming off a 39-point season and I think a fresh contract, I think we had to sign him. Um, he's plus 13, so it's not like he's not playing defense, but as an offensive defenseman, you're kind of looking for like a 35-point season for him, especially coming off of what he just did. So I wouldn't hate trading Ekman Larson, although he's kind of one of the OG uh, Coyotes that we still have. I think we got Gormley. Summers, we re-signed out of free agency. So... Technically, OG, but he hasn't been with us. Um, uh, Murphy, 27. So yeah, maybe that's what it takes to get these guys up. What about uh, what about players like Faxa? Yeah, see, he got his jump. Uh, who else did we get? Ah, Jesus Christ. We got Sissons. He got a little bit of a jump. It was Sissons, Faxa, and Reinhardt, I think. And then in goal, what's what do we got for chips here? Uh, Subban, we traded for. So Subban's a trading asset. I don't want to call um, Ekman Larson a trading asset, but I wouldn't hate it. Uh, Drace at all, I kind of want to hold on to. See if he's going to get any better. Wheeler, we're holding on to for sure. Thrower, he can go, um, even though he doesn't have any trade value. Ernie, I want to keep. Subban, Thrower. Uh, well, who do you have up front that I can get rid of? Anyone? Not really. I want to keep all these guys. Jenner, I wouldn't hate trading. 
He's got some trade value to him, so it wouldn't be the worst. Yeah, I could trade Jenner. These, and then what's uh, what's our pick looking like? We got Phoenix's pick. That's our pick. So I wouldn't mind uh, flop flopping, flipping that for someone else's. So what can we get for these three here? I'm going to need to get another fourth line center um, and then something. So I could definitely get there first. Um, although I'm not interested in firsts unless they're like top 10 at this uh, this stage in a GM mode. Definitely not going to have enough value to it. Why am I in goalies? Jesus Christ, I need to pay attention. All skaters. That's what we want to see. What do you have for prospects for me? R. DeLeo. Uh, he is 74 overall only, so he wouldn't be able to take that uh, that fourth line duty just yet. Clark would be, but I'm uh, not interested. All right, so McDavid, we're not going to be able to pull. Grigorenko, none of these guys have trade value, so they're not good prospects without spending too much time looking into it. Should have gone trading block. Maybe I will. Monahan, um, 83 overall. We could put him in that, but I want to get a. F I think we can get someone better. Okay, let's go to the trading block. Let's get a prospect, at least four. There we go. 82, doesn't that? Let's lower that to 80. 80, just 80. Alright. So, K. Ballard looks like um, someone we could have, but uh, it'd be a waste to put an 84 overall on that uh, on that fourth line. Who do you have for potential? Drew and McKinnon. Obviously, I'm not going to pull any of those guys. Monaghan. Um, how old is he now? 26, so I'd rather not. I'd rather take someone a little bit younger. Let's actually turn this age down. See who we pull now. Ooh, there's not very many players at all. Two of them are on our team. So, Jeffrey Zanin, who was on our team when we traded him. And uh, Kip Ballard, who we could get, but we have no place for him. Um, definitely good puck skills, good physical presence. Uh, not the best shot, and uh, not the best defense or offense, so really not even looking that good. Yikes. 24, maybe we'll find someone else. Added one player, McDavid, who we're not going to get. Um, leave it at 24, because I guess that's not the end of the world. That turns down to like 78. Of course, 78 to 0, which is definitely what I put in. Looking cool. Okay. Still uh, added Clark. That player from Boston. Uh, so it's looking like there's no uh, no third line or fourth line centers we could pick up in a trade for those three uh, those three trading chips that we do have um, for defense. We definitely have enough to get. Uh, I don't. This guy's Cam Popes. Yeah, we don't. I remember seeing him in the draft. We don't have enough to get him. We would have enough to get our own guy. Uh, Ned Clermont we could get, um, but it's not like he demands much. And then Calvin Beach. Uh, it's just four red stars, so I'm not exactly stoked on him. Goalie prospects. <laughs> if we could get this guy, I'd be stoked on that. That would be exciting. Um, was he... Even Cologne, who's got less trade value, would be cool to get. 22. 22. They're both 22. Uh, first overall. Falk went 10th overall. So... Don't know what I'd be picking up here. Definitely none of these guys. So let's take a look at uh, Falk and Cologne here. Just to, just to say, let's see what would happen. We'd obviously have to give up our best goalie. Um, Subban has a trading chip that we have. And then... Who was it? Who was it? Who was it? I mean, thrower, sure. It's not like it's going to affect the trade. But who was I looking at as... Uh, 
Jenner, right? Was it Thrower? I don't know if I would have considered him a trading asset. Not very good. But he definitely is. Um, must have been. Must have been Thrower that I was talking about. Okay, so what? That's not going to net us something that intense at all. Ekman Larson, uh, if I threw him into a trade, we could definitely use his boosted value there to get something going. If you take Ekman Larson and uh, Byzantine, they still wouldn't even equal that. If we go over to Calgary's prospect goalie, not really a prospect anymore, but just stud goalie, young guy. Definitely someone we can actually get. We would need to pick up Monahan to center that uh, center that fourth line since we're ditching Jenner or Klimchuk. How good is Klimchuk? Seventy nine overall. Not stoked on that. Who else do they have? Cuisineau. No, 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 no. Actually, it doesn't need to be a center because we have uh, Samuelson, so it could just be a forward. So who do they have for fourth line forwards? Anyone from here down, I guess. Anyone that could still get better? Not really, eh? They're kind of getting old now. We got Jay Olsen. He's only three and a half red star, though. So they want to get rid of uh, Glenn Cross. So I could do that. Take him. That should help with the salaries. Um, we probably have to put another goalie on because they may be full of goalies. One, yeah, they have six signed. So who's got the lowest? Talbot. Make sure. Yeah, Talbot. have to take other players too maybe skaters who's got no value Auban and Roche so this would go through uh, they have a full club apparently uh, I'll take off one of these goalies and just see no so yeah I do have to take I have to take everything that I'm giving so everything that I'm giving has to have more value than what I'm getting back Cologne is going to be very hard for us to pick up We'll see what happens if I offer this. I'm guaranteed. Ah, I'm not going to guarantee it doesn't go through. And still, we're not pulling back a defenseman to replace Ekman Larson. So, um, if we're trading Thrower and Ekman Larson, it's like Kink will have to come up and play the rest of the season. So, uh, our team gets better in net, but uh, might take a hit and everywhere else. I just want to make sure I even want to do this. Yeah, so Kink would have to come up and play, which isn't the end of the or end of the world. Not a big deal, unless uh, unless we can see if they got any replacement defenseman with no trade value, which I doubt they do. Yeah, they don't have that. Oh, Watherspoon. Ah, uh, yeah, I'll take Watherspoon and keep uh, what's his dick, Kink in the minors, if we can try to get this to go through. I'm not confident. Uh, let's see what happens. Yeah, see. So, all I'm, all I'm going to do is uh, swap firsts. If we want to pick up a goalie prospect, we can do that at the end of the uh, end of the season and at the draft or whatever. I want to trade with someone that is in our division. Like the Kings, that don't have too much value. Like, like San Jose, no too much value. How about Vancouver? Ooh, that won't go through. It's the opposite of what we need. We need them to be red, and we can be white. Anaheim, too much value. And Calgary, too much value. So we'll just do, uh, we'll do Chicago here. That'll go through. Done deal. Swap firsts. And we're almost 25 minutes here in the video, so we'll just quickly simulate to the end of the season. 
because no one cares about these last 20 games. It's not worth enough for its own video, and uh, it's not like anything exciting happens. Ooh, big loss. Keeping the team we've got, I'm happy with how I've been performing. I mean, 41, 15, and 8. Um, definitely no need to shake up the team by trading away Ekman Larson and all that. I mean, if we could have picked up that goalie, definitely would have been a good addition to the team, but maybe it's a blessing in disguise that didn't go through. But that's what it's like when you put trades on hard. You definitely have to overextend or uh, only make trades for players that are have red names. Ooh, Vancouver's got a solid record. That's probably why they beat us. 42, 17, and 8. Uh, you're, we're playing a lot of teams that have 40 wins, so it's got to be a close, uh, a close playoff push this year. There's a team that's not making it. We should be able to beat them. Yeah, 4-1. Predators... Ooh, they got us back for that uh, game on Saturday the 13th. Dauphin up to 39 goals now. Minnesota, uh, probably a bubble team at this point. Ooh, look at that. We are legendary. We are elite. Right on, dude. Ooh, and there's the, the Canucks again. Can we get him for last time? Can we get him for last time? Yeah, 4-1. Big win. Dauphin got his 40th, so good season for him. Hopefully he's still got the most in the league. Uh, don't think the Avs are making the playoffs this year. There's the team we swap picks with. Uh, we're definitely having a better season than they are, so... If, uh, worst case scenario, we both get out first round, uh, that pick will be better. The only time our pick will not be better is if they outlast us in the playoffs. Um... If they beat us in the Western Conference Finals um, or make it to the Western Conference Finals and we don't, then uh, it was a bad trade. Otherwise, we come out on top. A couple of big losses in a row here. Trying to get 50 on the season. Can we do it? 50 on the season. There it is. 50th win of the season. 50, 20, and 8. That gives us, what, four games left to play, I think. So. That's how math works. Um, Dauphin, 42 goals. McKinley, 66 assists. Ekman Larson. Uh, highest plus minus on the team, regardless of his lack of points. Uh, Byzantine with 40 of our 50 wins. And these must be our last four games here. Uh, getting shut out. Exactly what we want to see. Big 5-3 win to bounce back. Let's see Dauphin uh, bury three here in the last two games. Let's see him get to 45 goals. He got one there. So can he get a multi-goal uh, game here? Last game of the season. At home against the Ducks. Uh, no. We lost 4-3 and often did not score once. 69 sexual assists for uh, McKinley. Ending up with 109 points, which is absolutely insane. That's a legendary season for the kid. Uh, Dauphin, unless this uh, Kadoban guy manages to have one more game and gets a multi-goal night, uh, we're good there. McKinley... Not only did he uh, have the most points in the league and most assists in the league, he actually had uh, fourth most goals in the league as well. So definitely a huge season from him. Skinner turning it around near at the end too for uh, his second line, getting 39 goals. So definitely a lot of points there. Um, we're just going to sim up to see who we play. Um, give him a quick scout. And... Uh, do the old end of the season wrap up see um, if anyone turned it around for us there points wise like it looks like it looks like Skinner did so there's four picks here one there but we're not going to get top five there's no way uh, this shit doesn't matter Pick up these two Russians, I guess. Ooh, you know what? I wonder if I fucked up. Here, uh, we'll check out later. I wonder if that uh, goalie, if I only signed him to one year, I don't remember, because we would have had to trade him off there. And it looks like the Jets did squeak into the playoffs. Uh, must have been an eight. I'm gonna go ahead on a limb here. 
and say we definitely won at uh, 100 and what do we have 113 points we might not yeah yeah we did playoff tree this will tell us 1-4 yeah and uh, Buffalo Buffalo won their side actually no because that could just be the division yeah there's only one way to find out yeah okay so uh classic president's trophy for the Phoenix Coyotes uh, it looks like the Devils picking up top honors in the East, followed by Buffalo, and then Nashville won the Central. All right, not a big deal, not a big deal. Chicago, uh, who he swapped picks with, fifth overall in the uh, in the league, tied with Vancouver, pretty much on the button. Regulation overtime wins, they had more though. So, player stat season, a little end of the year wrap up. Take a look at this Art Ross winning Kevin McKinley. There he is. So in his third season, he's gone from his rookie caller, or did he get snubbed? I don't remember. Uh, to a point per game to 100 plus points in a season. Very, very good. Stoked on that. Dauphin uh, over a point per game as well for the first time in his career. Uh, probably picking up that Rocket Richard. Toscala, point per game. Very good. Um, that's kind of what we were hoping when we picked him up. He didn't really perform for us last year, so a little worried about that. Grummet Morris on that second line, 21-52, 73 points, which is more than enough on a second line. Skinner, um, thought he turned it around. Didn't really. He just had a shitload of goals and not many assists. So kind of what I was seeing there. Uh, like I said, mid to hu mid to high 50s for Galchenyuk, which is what he got. And then Riley and Gormley. Riley finally uh, doing what we needed. 53 points is good for him. 36 points, yeah. Uh, 42 was a little bit extreme for, uh, for Gormley last time. And Ryan Hart in his first full season since uh, he was shit got 29 points. So that's not bad. It's not bad at all. Faxa. 23 points, centering the third line. That's good enough. Uh, he should be really plus, right? Oh, plus five. And Ekman Larson. Uh, definitely his worst point performance in a season, but uh, his best plus minus. Uh, least penalty minutes, so I guess he was still doing some shit right out there. And um, don't need to check out the depth, guys. But what we will do is go back in here, check out the Winnipeg Jets. If it will load up, obviously. Winnipeg Jets. All right, here they got. No one even close to a point per game. They got Andrew Ladd as their top point getter. Uh, I think that's how many points uh, Skinner got. So, not that impressive. Shifley as their first line center, not that impressive. And Wheeler as their first line right winger, also not very impressive. So. Uh, their top three players definitely getting the top three or the top three forwards getting the top three amount of points. Bufflin uh, gonna have to watch for him. A 50 point defenseman is something to be worried about. Morrissey had 40 points, and he's only an 80 overall, so he must uh, not have like physical or anything. Yeah, no physical, crazy shot. Yeah, that's kind of what I was expecting to see. Patan, he must be their second line center. 37 points. Uh, Lowry on his wing, 36 points. Who's their next forward? Jesus Christ. Wingles? No, he's probably their third line center. Frazier, probably. So they don't have much depth at all uh, for forwards. Their defensemen didn't look so shitty. Uh, Asham. The, uh, <laughs> the goalie we never got back. He is uh, looking to fight us in the playoffs here as a member of the Winnipeg Jets. Uh, did he get the majority of their starts? He did. Not posting bad numbers, 91.5. I mean, I like to see a 92 from my guys, but that's still good, especially for an 82 overall. Where's goals against average? Did I just fucking fly right by at the start? Totally did, 2.58. Uh, that's a little high for me as well, but he did better than Bishop. So there's something to be said about that. So they don't, they don't have good goaltending. They don't have good forwards. Um... 
their defense is decent. I mean, for a top four. Although, ooh, Parker. Brutal. Uh, Stone is actually in their top four. Um, we used to have Stone. But Stone is in their top four. Um, probably over top of Chad Ruedel. He just has more points because he gets power play time. Uh, you don't think Stone does. <coughs> Penalty minutes. Morrissey only had four. Jesus. So it looks like uh, their top point guy, Bufflin, and uh, Bogosian also just get a ton of penalty minutes. So if we can keep those guys off the ice, um, they don't really have much for us to worry about. So uh, we'll definitely just get this simulation done um, right off the bat next episode since we already did the pre-scouting here. Actually, shit, you know what we didn't do is check out their lines and make sure I was right about where I put in all their guys. All right. Lowry, Patan, and Froelich are actually their first line, so that's really, really weird. Um, Lad, Shifley, and Wheeler are their second line, so don't know what they're doing. Um, Froelich is apparently the winger I was thinking of. Uh, Fraser's actually on the fourth line, so is Wingles, so they got a fucking just a mess going on here on their line. Uh, Pouliot also wanted to join their team, I guess. Defense, um, Bogosian and Stone... So they don't even they don't they're not even using Puff when they're highest overall on the uh on the top pairing. And uh I was wrong, Morrissey is actually on the third pairing, not Ruidel. Power play, I have to be right about that. Ooh, they don't even have Shifley first line power play, but they do have the two defensemen I was thinking. And uh Ruidel is not on the power play, it is Stone, so I don't know how, why Stone does not have any points. So maybe he's not something we even really need to worry about. But uh and then goal they're probably starting Asham, right? Yeah. All right, so they have a really weird um, structure to their team, but it got them to the playoffs, and when you're in the playoffs, anything can happen. But we did win the President's Trophy, uh, what is this, like the third, fourth year in a row. Um, last year, we didn't make the playoff run we were hoping for, trying to go for that three-peat, and we just uh, fucked that up. But this year, I think uh, things are seeming uh, pretty good for us. So next episode, just going to jump right into the sim. Gotta fucking end this recording before it gets way too long. Thanks for watching, boys. I will see you in the next one. Peace.